it seems like a full house all right lovely a very good morning and thank you so much for having taken the time to join me in today's webinar this is jay a technical evangelist with manage engine first things first before we get started for those of you who want a copy of today's presentation you can feel free to shoot a message at the end of today's uh, webinar and i'd be able to give you both the presentation deck and the video recording of the webinar if you have questions coming up during the course of the presentation please feel free to shoot your questions then and there i'll try to take as many as possible now getting to today's topic identity and access management is going to be our central agenda and simplifying your identity access management through effective you know empowerment of users is what we'll be talking about so why this specific topics organizations right now are demanding greater flexibility they are looking towards saving costs at multiple fronts there's a lot of data that gets handled day in day out and as organizations are growing the number of applications that the users use are also exponentially growing so that being the case managing users identities falls obviously on your lap the administrator so with every single user being provisioned day in day out there are going to be 10 other apps 20 other apps on an average survey states that there are at least 12 cloud apps being used per user in organizations today that's based on the survey that Gartner organized in 2017 so now that we've understood that the whole uh, IT is shifting towards cloud, accessing more applications, you know, giving your end users the flexibility to get all those from their consoles, the challenge again comes at the point where you'll need to simplify the process for them. So we are always going to have users, you know, uh adopting all cheeky ways all uh all all ways like you know writing their passwords on sticky notes we still have users doing such workarounds for remembering multiple passwords but then we can't essentially blame them can we so they do all this because they need access to the, all those applications day in day out and then with the password complexities that we administrators put in place it's going to be super difficult for them to remember all that and get going utilizing all their applications so the idea is to centralize the entire password and identity management into one console you have 10 apps perfect what if I tell you your users need to just log into their laptops or their devices? It could be their Mac or it could be their Windows laptop or even their mobile for that matter. And they are good to go to use all the applications that you configure specifically for your end users. What am I trying to talk about right here? So we are going to be talking about something that is game changing. We are talking about single sign on through active directory password synchronization through active directory based single sign on so all that your user needs to do is get into their laptops and then they'd be already set for active directory based single sign on to 100 plus applications we are extending the list yes we are constantly working on it we are making our platform open to uh, integrations and we've got SAML based authentication where you can customize your own apps. So why did we actually come up with the whole idea of getting our tool to scale up to as many applications as possible? Why single sign on and based on Active Directory? So the first challenge that all administrators face is the calls that you get day in day out. So the employee goes out for a vacation, they get back, they have 10 different accounts that they use and they forget passwords for everything all alike. So you're going to be the one at the end of the phone, picking up the call somewhere in the middle of the night, trying to answer or resolve a password reset ticket. So all of this boils down to your end users and them forgetting their passwords or them wanting to change their passwords to all their apps. Why not have a platform that could not just simplify sign on with a single sign on but also go one step further and synchronize passwords across different platforms so that is the idea that sparked and we got the whole uh, active directory based single sign on and password synchronization kick started into ad self service plus which is the product that's going to be enabling us through today's session so 
We will also be taking a look at the issues that administrators face in terms of reminding their users of impending password problems, impending inconsistencies in password operations that they perform. So we'll be taking an overall deep dive into single sign-on, having it configured, in creating a dashboard for your end users, going granular. This is the most important part of today's webinar specifying which set of users based on their OUs or group memberships get what access in uh, their dashboard or what applications uh, in their dashboard, all right? We'll also go further talking about authentications and how we kind of strengthened it. We are working on something really, really cool right now. We are trying to get the whole thing done, uh, you know, uh, on an adaptive basis. We will try and understand different parameters, things like your geographical location, things like your GPS locations, things like your network or IP, and then get going with a dynamic single sign-on and authentication. So that's something that's uh, that's in line for release. We're working on that. I'll be giving you a sneak peek on what's more and what's coming up and what's cooking in our labs all right so all in all today's session is going to be about single sign-on it, it's active directory based we're going to be accessing multiple applications right here have that configured have password synchronization also set in place and go forward that is the agenda for the day all right <clears throat> So when it comes to the product, there are two ways in which the product works. The first one is going to be the identity provider initiated single sign-on. What does that mean? So when it comes to the IDP way of uh, single sign-on, all right, the idea is to have AD Cell Service Plus in the first place. So if you're talking about Federation services, all right, that is one way of getting your single sign-on done or your authentications done. But when it happens through the identity provider that we're talking today, which is AD Cell Service Plus, there's going to be an inbuilt functionality in terms of, uh, you know, hardening the security at multiple levels. We're talking about having multi-factor authentications in place. We're talking about having different techniques. Uh, you know, it could be your basic security questions. It could be something as advanced as a touch ID or your RSA or your OTP or your time-based OTP, Google Authenticator, whatnot. So all that your end user needs to do for an IDP initiated single sign-on is get themselves authenticated with the policies that we have in place with the uh, uh, multi-factor authentications that we have in place, securely get into their system, no fooling around, nobody can uh, crack or, you know, try guessing the passwords or, you know, doing something of that sort. It's going to be straightforward, it's going to be secure, and they'd get immediate access to all those 100 applications or 200 applications that are configured. So that is, Pretty much why someone should be taking forward the IDP initiated single sign on from AD Cell Service Plus over any other vendor or ADFS for that matter. When it comes to the uh, service provider initiated single sign on, so this is what happens when users try logging in from their mobile devices. Let's say they try logging in directly to their Office 365 portal. So when the SSO is configured on the background and it's service provider based, the integration is going to call upon AD Cell Service Plus, authenticate there, and then get them back to the product to which they need to log in. So that way, they'd be able to still you know, have that extra layer of security. The admin will be able to have that extra layer of security through the product. So I'll be getting more in detail about the password policies that can be enforced they are a lot stronger than the default password policies that are available in different applications so that one differentiator can get your whole identity management a lot more secure and it's going to be a single console so it's going to be less time consuming it's going to be uh, easy to manage the logistics are absolutely simple and straightforward so two ways identity provider initiated which is from ad self service plus to the app and the next one is the service provider which is from the application through the product authentication and then back to the application something like that so we will be talking about granular password policies where we can have different strengths 
different uh, you know filters set for different OUs or groups. So this is going to apply retrospectively. It's going to be everywhere. It could be when the user is trying to log in even from their AD through their uh, Gina. It could be from their mobile. It could be from the end users applications. All that gets granular through this uh, you know single sign on dashboard that we're talking about all right. Likewise, when I told you you can get uh, different groups of users to have different accesses, different applications. So the HR would re require a single sign on only to a specific list of applications. The, um, you know, factors of authentication, it need not be multiple. If it's the sales we're talking about, the sales team handles more critical data. If that's the case, then you can have more layers to the same process, but then with different authentication. So you can very well configure, customize what needs to be the authentication that's letting them through the single sign on. All right. So that's about the uh, granular implementations of policies, having OU based and group based access controls to different applications. So when we are talking about HR, let's say there's a software like the Bamboo HR, only people in the HR OU will need that. We're talking about CRM applications or Salesforce for the sales department, only they'll be needing that. So I'll be walking you through how to configure Salesforce, Google Apps, Office 365, Zoho CRM for that matter. All right, so multiple applications, right? <clears throat> Password policy enforcement. So before we get to this cool bit of today's presentation, I'm gonna quickly open up the product, you know, show you or demonstrate as to how a uh, single sign-on, which is the uh, SP initiated or the service provider initiated work. So here I'm talking about Office 365. All right, I'm trying to log into my O365 right here. All I gotta do is get in enter the credentials it gets redirected to ad self-service plus <clears throat> so this is where i get to uh, you know key in my ad credentials so if i'm already logged in it get me just through straight through if ntlm is enabled so now i'm working on my uh, virtual machine so the authentication is happening in the background and then there you go so i'm getting through it so Office 365 get, gets logged in right here. So the idea behind getting the application is to, you know, having one portal and having all these applications made accessible. All right, so that is one way of logging into your uh, machine or your uh, application. So the next one that I'm going to be talking about is configuring or getting this up and running. Just give me one quick moment where I you how this gets done all right we're talking about ad self-service plus i'm going to try and log in as a user right now the other way around the first one was uh, initiated from the service provider so this one is going to be initiated from the user or the user from the portal gets to access it through a dashboard all right I'm going to be doing an IDP initiated single sign on right now. So let's talk about an application right here. Let's take Salesforce. All right. So my intention is to log into Salesforce and it's going to be through the identity provider. So I'm trying to log in as the user right now. The user is going to be Jake Martin. All right, this is the AD self-service portal from where the user tries and logs in. So at the back end, the administrator has configured a set of applications for this specific user. Jake Martin essentially belongs to the sales department. So that being the case, Jake Martin's dashboard would essentially have Salesforce application from where it's just one click away. He can say just Salesforce, click on it, and he's already into the system or uh, into Salesforce for that matter. So logged in as Jake. So there's going to be the applications tab from where Jake can directly get in. So just a quick moment. Logging in back as Jake. So 
So the idea is to get to the dashboard, see the applications that are available for this specific user. It's already been pre-configured. <clears throat> so like I told you, you can have restrictions made for different departments, different OUs. And again, since it's Active Directory based, it's all the more easier to manage the whole thing. So this dashboard is essentially the end user's dashboard or end user's view into the product. So everything related to password, talking about changing passwords, that's going to be possible. The user can very well get here, change passwords, not just in one platform, but across platforms on the go. So again, there are two things that can happen. One, if you have password synchronization enabled, passwords that get changed in Active Directory are going to get reflected across all the other cloud applications that are uh, you know, linked. So Jake has access to three other cloud applications in addition to Active Directory. So if Jake wants to change the password, based on the password policy that I've set in the product, that gets applied to the other applications as well. So this is exactly what I'm talking about, not just one application, but then if you want to make the whole suite of applications secure, you can have password policies configured and then they're going to get applied when the user is trying to change their password across platforms. So this can be made optional. You can let the users change passwords for each of the accounts one by one or you can disable that and make it the same for all the applications completely up to you customizations are available all right so when i get to the applications tab i'd be able to see a list of applications for which jake is enrolled through the product <clears throat> So here you go. So these are the applications for which Jake has access to. There's Office 365, there's Salesforce, there's Zendesk, there's Zoho. All right. So all that Jake needs to do is just click on one of those applications and he's going to get redirected to that specific uh, console or that specific product. All right. Trying to log in right now. So from Salesforce, let's see Jake directly gets into his account. There you go. So Jake's Salesforce account is in place. So when it comes to the configuration side of things, the administrator necessarily need not struggle a lot to get the single sign on. So we've got a lot of things pre-configured for you, just a few clicks away. The certificates are already in place. The links are already pre-populated and Jake is already into his uh, Salesforce account. So that way we've seen two things. One, it could be the identity provider initiated, the one we just saw, or it could be the other way around, which is the service provider initiated, which was the Office 365 example, all right? From the back end, how does all this look? What does the administrator need to do? It could be your G Suite that we are talking about. Configuration or single sign on is pretty simple. All I need to do is say single sign on, you know, say set single sign on, get to single sign on in Google Apps. There are a few basic configurations that I need to make. <clears throat> So when I get here, I'd be having a list of URLs that I need to populate, a certificate that I need to upload. Pretty simple. So this is the admin console for G Suite. I, I, I can say set up SSO with a third party identity provider. In this case, it's going to be AD Self Service Plus basic details that are available in the product and then i will need to just generate a certificate and replace this existing certificate so that every user in my organization when configured rightly is going to get access to this specific list of applications from the g suite so if you're wondering as to what applications need to be curtailed you can do all that for that you'll need to get back to ad self service plus to understand how it's done from an admin standpoint all right I'm going to show you that it gets very simple so we've got detailed help documentations that are going to handhold you and walk you through setting up integrations with all these applications 
uh, take my word for it, it does not take more than a minute or two to configure the whole uh, integration between two applications, any given uh, cloud application, just a minute or two. So if you're working with, say, for example, 30, 40 applications, it's just going to probably take you an hour's time to configure all of that. And if in case you're lost somewhere, no worries. We are always here to help. You know, I'm going to log in as the administrator. And show you how simple the configuration could actually get. So I'm going to get into configuration in AD Self Service Plus. And this time around, I'm going to show you how uh, the single sign on configuration works for the Google Apps. All right. I'll show you a few more examples as well as after that. I've already got a request for Salesforce. Lovely. That was in my plan already. So no worries. I'm going to show Salesforce after this one. SSO for long is, has been very straightforward and the whole idea is to simplify password management for your end users and as a matter of fact, if it gets simple for your end users, it's obviously going to be simple for the administrators as well because lesser the number of tickets that you need to be handling. All right. So the idea is to quickly have multiple applications in one place, reduce your password related challenges. And in addition to this, AD Cell Service Plus is also feature rich in terms of the granularity and password policy enforcement. All right, I'm going to get there in a bit. So I'm going to try and configure a single sign on. Lovely. So here you go. So the list of applications that are available for single sign on are listed right here. All the top ones, Salesforce, Office 365 could be your Active Directory, Dropbox, Box, uh, and multiple other applications like your HR applications like Workplace, or Bamboo HR for that matter, anything of that sort. And we do not necessarily want to, uh, you know, stop you from just using the basic applications or the uh, uh, 150 plus applications that are right here, the ones that are configured. You can go further. In fact, have your new or own custom application, any application that supports SAML authentication. You can do an account linking. You can get your new custom application on board. All right. So now let me get to Google Apps, show you how easy it is. <clears throat> so I've got a few accounts or G Suite master admin accounts in place. Configuring it is pretty simple. I need to select the module, whether it's password synchronization or just single sign on. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead with single sign on. If you're wondering how password synchronization works, it's going, it's going to be an agent based password synchronization. So Active Directory passwords that are getting changed are going to get fetched and applied across your different uh, applications. So here we're talking about single sign on. I've keyed in the basic details already. And when I hit the policies, this is where you actually get to understand as to what needs to be applied for which application. So if my sales department is the only department that needs my Google Apps, I can go on and have a policy that maps just employees from the sales department to have access to G Suite. So that's one beautiful uh, functionality of this application. And then if you want any help configuring it, you can always rely on the detailed instructions that are given right here underneath the product. 
So the application, and if you want to know how it needs to be configured, pretty simple self-explanatory details with screenshots that tell you where exactly you need to, uh, you know, key in the details, have the certificates installed. It's that simple. That's all. It's going to just take you probably less than a minute. So you can then get to the encryption details, see what are the values, have it copied back to your Google Apps. All right, if you're talking about the admin console right here, you can get that copied from here, all those data from there, have it filled. And then the last requirement is going to be the certificate. You can download the certificate, or in fact, if you want to work with uh, an XML file or metadata file, you can very well download this as well and keep it even more simple and safe. You can do that and get going with your single sign on. Just two steps, one from the application end, which is the uh, Google Apps, and then the next one from the identity provider, which is AD Cell Service Plus, and you're already good to go. The same is going to be the case with the other applications as well. Since I had a request for Salesforce, let me quickly check if I can demonstrate Salesforce as well for you. <clears throat> I'm going to try and log in as the administrator in Salesforce and show you how the configuration is done right there. All right, so what you got to do is you got to get to security controls in Salesforce, get to single sign on settings. Once that's done, you again are taken to a page where you can enter the details from your identity provider, which is AD Cell Service Plus. These details are available in the product once more. Let me show you how it's done. I need to enable SAML based uh, single sign on authentication. I'm going to go ahead, show you what was done. getting back to the list of applications here opening up salesforce for you to show you how simple that is all right so we're talking about salesforce right here getting to salesforce Again, so if you want your sales department to have access to it, you can have restrictions in place. Um, you can quickly enable or disable uh, an integration through the check mark that's right here. You can say enable or disable. <clears throat> so I'm going to get to Salesforce and show you how that works. So just in case if you want to, you know, try out the product at your end, all right, you can always get to demo.adcellserviceplus.com. That's the product that's hosted on the cloud for you to, you know, get back, work around with the product, get your hands dirty, check if that will be useful for you. I've dropped the link to access this uh, cloud instance of the product right here on the chat. You can always make use of it. Demo.adcellserviceplus.com. That's the cloud instance that's available for your use. Try logging in as the domain administrator. You would get the complete list of configurations that are available. All right, lovely. So I'm going to get to <clears throat> single sign on again. This is from the service 
uh, AD cell service plus demo instance that's available. You can use it at your end too. Opening up Salesforce to show you how it looks. Here you go. So all those details that you need to populate can be uh, filled out right here from your Salesforce. You can have the details fetched from your Salesforce uh, portal. Pretty simple, straightforward, available at your disposal from this uh, setting page right here. I'd already walked you through as to how to get here. You can fetch data from here, have it copied back, choose the file from the export that you'd be making from AD Cell Service Plus, have it updated here. So it's always going to be a two way handshake. One bit that involves your configuration on the end user application, and the other bit from AD Cell Service Plus. All right. Pretty simple again. You can get to get to the codes you'd be able to see what's what you can get the certificate as well again what do you need to do if you have any uh, doubts with the configuration get to the help documentation refer it you would have step-by-step -step instruction with dedicated screenshots so for every single application that is already pre-integrated with the product you would have detailed step by step walkthrough to get the single sign-on uh, you know configured running up in place all right, so we've talked about two of the most commonly used applications. One, Salesforce, and uh, the first one was Office 365. We also spoke about Google Apps. So if you're talking about CRM, Zoho is one efficient CRM. So you can have Zoho CRM, again, configured as well. So if you'd want to do that configuration, it's pretty simple. Have the configuration done from the Zoho master uh, admin console. You can have the integration set up in no time. <clears throat> So if you're talking about SAML authentication right here, you can get to SAML authentication, fill in uh, the details that can be extracted from the product. Again, straightforward, you gotta get to the product, say the application for on which you wanna work on, say single sign on and password synchronization. In this case, it's going to be Zoho. The flow is pretty much the same. You would have understood that by now. Get to the application, get the basic credentials, fill out the value from the app portal. You'd have all these values available, the portal URL and things like that from here. Get that back to the product and fill that out. And from the product, fetch data for encryption and the certificate that needs to be installed back at your uh, vendor application and the integration is already successful and in place. It's that simple. All right. There are uh, other important attributes that are associated with this topic of single sign-on that I'm talking about. I was very concerned in the beginning about the idea of granularity associated with password management. All right. So I'm going to walk you through that bit of password policy enforcement. So what do I actually have? Why, why am I talking about policies right here? My Active Directory for long has had so many password policies or different policies, it could be my group policy or my password policy, all that. But then what did Microsoft not do? It has not updated the password policy in the last 13 years. That's been the same. So what we've done is we've kind of come out with a workaround that's going to sit on top of the existing password policies for any of your applications, make it a lot more secure. So here, when a password policy is enforced for a specific criteria of users, all right, I can have the length sorted, I can have special characters put in place. I can in fact neglect a certain set of characters. I can disallow my users from you know using any of these uh, usual parameters or it could be organization at one two three password at one two three the most common password you can stop all that in fact if you want to be a lot more secure we've kind of reversed engineered the idea of brute force attacks or dictionary attacks we will let you import a dictionary that's also updated very frequently and available on the AD Cell Service Plus help documentation and international database of the most commonly used unsafe passwords from where you can just choose a dictionary, say upload, and none of your users would be able to use any of those passwords from the list. So what are we trying to do right here is to keep your password related problems at bay. None of your users are going to have insecure passwords that are weak. All right, they're going to get access to 
setting strong passwords right from where they'd actually uh, key in their passwords. And we're talking about the Gina screen. So I'd have the provision to alter the password or change password and show them a prompt display of what needs to be filled out. What am I talking about right here? I'll show you it in action. So I try and change the password right now and I for long have been facing this issue with my users. So they try changing their old password, new password, but then they never really have a prompt that tells them what needs to be the condition that needs to be met from the lockout screen. So most of the time, they try resetting their password, not knowing what is the criteria, end up again making a call to the help desk. So 30% of the help desk calls uh, you know, of every 100 call, 30 calls are for password resets and you'd not want your valuable time to go waste and resetting passwords for users. All right, so we're talking about letting them do a self-service. This is the most crucial bit. So I have a provision to reset or unlock my account. So if I'm locked out, all right, if I do not know what exactly is my password, if I'm locked out of my account, so I'm locking myself out, all right, I'm trying to log in right now. This is the place where I need to log in. So I've forgotten my password. So it says incorrect password. I do not know what to do. So now I have a very simple prompt right here that gives me the provision to unlock my account or reset my password right from the place where the problem begins. So no more help this calls for password resets. No more help this calls when the accounts are locked out. The user would be able to do it all by themselves. So the same applies to the 10 other applications that are linked to this master account or the Active Directory user account. So I can say reset password right here from my Gina screen. Answer a few security questions. If I have more rules that need to be met, all right? So I'm logging in as the administrator. I can be any user for that matter. Let me do Adam. I just need to answer a couple of security questions. If my administrators enabled a two-factor authentication, maybe a mobile-based authentication, I need to answer that as well, all right? It's time-based. Again, you have a clock that's ticking. You can't really cheat. <clears throat> all right, in this case, I've kept it pretty simple. I don't did not really want to have a two-factor, but then it's just going to be a one security question and then we are good to go. I can have uh, a touch ID in place. I can have a time-based OTP. I can have Google Authenticator, anything that I wish. So right here, when I'm trying to reset my password, all the other cloud applications that are linked can also be altered at the same time. And what do we see right here? At the same time, the rules that need to be met are also displayed. If I were to have made this stronger, if I were to have made two characters, if I were to have strengthened it a lot more, then all the other applications that are linked are also going to eventually have stronger passwords. It's that simple. So resetting passwords when users forget their passwords is as simple as just clicking one button right at the place where all goes wrong. All right, right here and I'm good to go. So logging back in. So if I want to enforce stronger password policies, I can say strong, I can increase this to two, I can increase the minimum length to say 10, I can do all those changes then and there. And if I want a passphrase in place, let's say 20 characters, that is going to be super difficult to crack or break, I can do that as well. So I can completely change the view, the requirements. So if my user's doing a password reset from the phone, what should he see? What should he or she see? If they're doing it from the, a mobile device, if they're doing it from the iPads, what should they see? What should be the factors of authentication? All that can be customized. That's the beauty of it. So we're talking about two things. One, enforcing policies. And all these policies can be for uh, you know different departments and different OUs, and they can be, again, specific to the criteria that I want them to meet. So here, if you can see, I've got policies at an organization level, I've got policies at a department level for specific employees in a geography, for a department, employees, roles, it could be anything. You can have innumerable such policies set and prioritize one over the other. So I've got security questions, I've got verification codes, Google Authenticator, Mobile Authenticator, SAML Authentication, 
all that so multiple combinations are possible so if you want two three how many ever you can have them set based on your requirement all right you can go still advance there's more granularity available right there i'm just going to stick to the basic today and move forward so a lot more is available so fingerprint authentication the most recently added so they can have touch id on their apple phones or their uh, you know uh, android phones with smart touch ids they can get through the authentication that way as well that is supported so we're talking about single sign-on we're talking about multi-factor authentication to secure that single sign-on make harden the security and password policy enforcement where we saw how it's beyond the basic password policies that can be enforced not just weak ones but then extraordinarily strong that sits on top of your existing password policies so these are a few basic functionalities that come apart as a part of the bundle that we are offering in ad cell service plus there's one more cool feature that i want you to take a look at which is password expiry notification ha this is one big problem reminding your users that their passwords are about to expire is a big pain irrespective of how many times over you do that for them they're still not going to change microsoft came up with a concept of pop-ups so what's the innate response when you see a pop-up you hit the close mark that's what happens all the time so we kind of figured out a way where they just not be able to close the pop-up before uh, you know, they reset their passwords or change their passwords, they'd not be able to get into their system. So we can force users when they need to change their passwords. You can have a pop-up in place that can never be closed or neither can they access any of the applications before they actually change their passwords. That's one way of doing it. We call it forced logon. We call it forced password resets. Or if you want to be the good admin, if you want to still keep reminding them, we've also got ways for you where you can have them notified on priority basis. So there can be a timeline that's associated with a scheduled based notification, uh, password expiry notification to all your users. Again, here password policies apply to different notifications, different timelines, different uh, policies for different users. You can do that. I can have notifications sent out for users for one week 30 days 50 days 60 days i can do all that i can have custom messages so one week before i'm going to be telling them that your password is going to expire in a week so please change so three days before i'll be like i've already reminded you but then you haven't changed your password so please change one day before i'm going to be like despite all your reminders you've not changed and finally if they still don't step up and change their password i'm going to go and say better change your password or i'm going to find you and change your password you could do all such custom notifications you can keep them engaged and get them to do what you want and this is a one time configuration where you can do sms notifications push notifications email notifications all that not just password expiry even account expiry so if you want a workflow to be put in place, if you want the managers to be notified, if you want the uh, administrator or the help desk to be notified, if they've changed or not changed, that can be done. You can have notifications sent out to all these stakeholders. All right, so we're talking about a holistic approach towards password management. So what have we discussed so far? Password policy enforcement for making passwords stronger. We've spoken about multi-factor authentication where you can have different methodologies to strengthen your authentication still further. We've talked about different forms of getting into uh, the products. So if you can see there's the user doing the first factor authentication through the product, doing a second factor, and then having the access to their dashboard where they see all the applications. I'll show you the dashboard once more. <clears throat> All right, so let me quickly show you the dashboard. Signing out, logging in back as one of those users to show you what can be done. So meanwhile, let me also, as that loads up, show you a few more stuff. When it comes to password synchronization, all these applications that are on the list are supported. So you do a password change in your Active Directory, you can have the whole list of applications to synchronize with the change that you make in the Active Directory. 
So that is another useful feature. So one password, a secure password for all these accounts. And since there's always going to be two-factor authentication in place, you need not worry about the security as well. So it's going to be taken care of, all right? I'm gonna log in as a user, Jake Martin. Or let's do a different user and let me show you Office 365 maybe. Let's say Ethan Hunt. All right. I'm going to try and open up Ethan Hunt's portal. Check what applications Ethan has access to. And try check and try and check if he's got access to Office 365 and if I'm able to log into O365 from my dashboard. So Ethan's dashboard is loaded up. He's already enrolled in the product answering a few security questions. We can always change the security questions and answers or the mode of authentications that are available from the enrollment tab that's right here. If the user wants to subscribe to certain licenses or groups that can be done. So if you're talking about Office 365 and Google Apps, most of the time organizations resort to group based or OU based licensing. That's very simple and straightforward to manage. So that way there can be an approval based workflow configured right here from where the users from their dashboards can access or ask for access to certain groups or for certain applications and it's going to be pretty simple the manager gets notified over mail they can say approve reject and then uh, the application or the group for which they've asked access for gets onto their active directory they get access to the apps all right pretty simple so they'd be able to ask for subscriptions right here that's available again from the dashboard of the end user so what we're talking about right now is applications and now my application of interest is Office 365. Let's see if Ethan can log into Office 365 from the applications tab right here. So when configured, all this is going to be available in password synchronization. In addition, there are certain things that can be done in password synchronization as well. <clears throat> so again, OU based and group based restrictions are available when that gets loaded up. Let me quickly be walking you through what's available, what else is available. One identity with one password, like I already told you, resets can be done from the account lockout screen. Modifications can be done from there, all right? Password synchronization and keeping track of the whole thing is going to be possible. Any change that gets made to any of those passwords gets logged, tracked for you to stay compliant, for your organization to stay compliant, all right? Getting back, I think it's loaded. Yes, applications. Lovely, so the applications have loaded. So if you can see, there are a few applications that are configured like Zendesk, Salesforce, Zoho, all that is configured. And Office 365 is also in place. So like you must have already guessed, all I need to do is just say Office 365 and I'm good to go. The application directly takes me to my login. It validates my ID from AD. It's already synced. So just gets me through to the product. Simple as that. The authentication is happening. It's a SAML based authentication. So the logging in is happening. So there seems to be an error message that tells me that I have a different uh, timestamp issue. No worries. 
it generally goes through like uh, effortlessly, but then there seems to be an issue right now. I've been logging into multiple applications with different user accounts and there's probably the issue of cache credentials right here. So I could probably do it once more. You know, different users on the same uh, instance trying to multiple uh, do multiple logins. That could be the reason. No, no problem. Any which ways, this is how it works. Just one click away to your application. All right. So when it comes to synchronization, all this I've already explained in detail. How does it work? There's going to be an agent that's going to be taking forward the passwords to different applications. It could be your Salesforce or any other application. So when there's a password change or when there's a password reset, the domain controllers get notified of that change. They get back to the AD Cell Service Plus, validations happen, and then synchronization takes place across all these applications. Yes. So when the sync is in place and the reset is done, you'd be able to get real time notifications on what apps got modified. So what's more to the AD Cell Service Plus product? So we're talking about extending our support to 300 more applications. That's good news. So all the ones that have been requested for, so we pay close attention to what you ask for. So by the end of today's session, if you want any applications uh, you know that you already have in mind, or you have your in-house application for which you want this integration to be in place, any tool for that matter, drop me a request and I'd be more than happy to see what we can do about it and get the application also integrated to the predefined setup. We're talking about something really interesting that could probably change the game of uh, single sign-on and authentication for that matter. We call it the adaptive authentication. It's going to be context-based. So it necessarily need not be the authentications that you usually use. We're not just talking about uh, OTP or we're not talking about, uh, you know, uh, text notifications or, or touch-based uh, authentications, not at all. We're going one step further. We're making the whole authentication process dynamic. So based on other factors like where you're located, based on your IP address, based on your geographic location, city, state, country, your device that you're using, we are trying to make the authentication seamless. So instead of having multiple steps, if there are certain parameters or we have a score for the context uh, access management or contextual access management. If you meet a relevant score, if the risk is super low and you've also met all these conditions, we are going to keep the authentication easier for you and make it more adaptive. So the whole idea is to make the product more accessible, more user friendly and easier for your end users to get to where they actually uh, need to go or the applications. So that is one nifty feature that we are working on. The next level of authentication is a lot more secure. It's multiple validations, multiple parameters taken into account and then letting them intelligently access through the authentication policies that they meet. All right. So again, what we've been talking about is single sign on for multiple applications. So to round or uh, sum things up for you through today's session, we discussed as to how single sign on can be configured for Salesforce, for Office 365, G Suite. It seemed pretty simple, straightforward. Yes, in fact, it's the same for all the other 100 products that we support. Multi-factor authentication through different techniques, going granular, saying who gets what policy, self-updating users' policies or uh, requesting for group memberships. We saw that as well. Password resets and account unlocks were absolutely simple. The users can do that from their uh, Gina account logout screen, or in fact, they can do it from AD Cell Service Plus as well, the portal that I just showed you. So all this is bundled together in AD Cell Service Plus. So the thought for the day is, Password management can be a lot more simpler when self-service and SSO is in place. And when you have this simple calculation in place, talking about an organization with 500 employees, the average number of calls is around 21. It's estimated 21 calls per employee per year. So that's about 10,000 calls, all right, every year just for password resets to your help desk. Yes, so 30% of them get accumulated from the whole help desk calls. So doing the math, you have these many number of calls for password resets and keeping the bare minimum of $10 per call, it could be even lesser, say even it could be $1 per call, that's absolutely all right, you're still going to be ending up expending $3,000 or in this case if it's $10, $31,000. So this is pretty um, 
you know, uh, in, ineffective when it comes to organizations trying to do the whole thing manually, leave alone single sign on. What about password self service? So if the tool is in place, you'd be able to save more than this. I've just kept the bare minimum. If you actually work out the math, you'd be saving uh, 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 thousands of dollars every year. So that is the kind of investment that you should be making. And just in case if you have any queries through the product or today's session, I'd be more than happy to walk you through set, uh, help you configure. If you're already a customer, great, good job working with the product. If you have questions, you can drop me. If you're trying to evaluate the product, I'd be more than happy to give you a personalized demo or a walkthrough. I can have the team uh, respond to your queries. And if in case you have any questions right now, feel free to shoot your questions we can have a discussion right now. Thank you so much for your time today. This is Jay, your presenter for the day from Manage Engine. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.